be a musician because music was so important to my growing up. I think my first influence of music on my life was through the church and music played such a very important part of my religious experience. Music uh, in the South when I grew up, uh, the radio station playing the rhythm and blues and the blues music on the air was in some ways our only entertainment. It was the only thing that I had when I was growing up and as I said I think what pushed me to be in music was I always loved the saxophone solos in the middle of those R&B records, and I wanted to be the guy that took that solo. Now, I have to say that I took piano when I was about seven or eight years old. And when I was nine, we moved from one place to another, and we could not take the piano. It was too heavy. And so I left my piano lessons, but I took uh, clarinet in school. and. Um, my music teacher informed my mother that I had a great natural ability in music. I'm not sure if I was destined to be a musician. I think I could have been many things. When I was young, my grandfather thought that I would be a preacher. He told my mother, he said, that boy can talk. He's going to be a preacher. I, when I was growing up, participated in a number of demonstrations. Um, during the, the late 60s, when I went to college at Columbia University in New York, in the year of 1968, there was a series of college demonstrations uh, across the United States that began with two universities, one Berkeley in California and the other being Columbia in New York. In Columbia, we uh, forcibly took over the campus. We um, held the administrators hostage for a time. We took over the campus to, to protest the war, to protest um, the conditions of black people. So very definitely, I myself have been committed to political activity. I was drafted into the army to go fight in the Vietnam War. And as a protest, I left the army. I ran away. I was a deserter in technical terms, and I moved from New York to San Francisco. San Francisco and Berkeley being a very left-wing area of the country um, was very sympathetic to people who were not for the war. When I was in San Francisco, I got involved with the Black Panther Party, the movement um, that we call the Soledad movement around uh, George Jackson. I helped with the arrangements for Angela Davis when she was a fugitive, all the while while I myself was a fugitive from the FBI. So the music that I made during that period would be political because that was what I was involved in. And so as we talked about, music often reflects what's going on in society. To get down, forget your inhibitions, just do some. There's no reason not to change your condition. If there's something you can use to get into the school, it's made to move you out on the dance floor, up on the ceiling. This beat will have you rocking and reeling from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top. Now, shake your booty and don't stop now. Dance to the rhythm, dance to the rhythm, dance. Dance to the rhythm, dance to the rhythm. I think funk originally and oftentimes is not overtly political. I agree. I think funk is largely a party music. But I could give numerous examples of funky music that has been to varying degrees political. I could say James Brown when he says, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Or even James Brown when he sang The Big Payback. Or uh, 
Parliament Funkadelic, which is one of the funkiest bands ever, um, they do, when they say, people, what you doing? Standing on the verge of getting it on really good. I think they don't just mean standing on the verge of getting it on in terms of partying. I think they mean standing on the verge of, of making a political activity. So many times funk bands do what a tradition that comes all the way from the black slavery period in the U.S., which is to have codes secret messages within the music. Sometimes it's embedded in the music in a way that if you're aware, you get it. And if you're not aware, you don't. And this comes from the tradition of where black people had slave masters. And in order to communicate, we might create a song that has a different meaning so that the slave master wouldn't necessarily know what we were saying. So you might sing an old spiritual song. You might say, um, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Well, you didn't just mean carry me home to a spiritual home. You might mean carry me back to Africa. Or you might say, steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. It's a, it's a thing to say, you know, tonight would be a good night to steal away, to get away. And so sometimes we are singing funk songs with double meanings. And so in that way, the funk can be very political as well as a part of this. Get up, get on up. Spell it, y'all. Spell it. 